Hello friends, today's topic is illustrations which is part of the provisions of the clubbing provisions. In this topic we will be understanding the provisions contained under section 60 to 64, under section 60 to 65 more broadly by way of a practical example as well as one or two case laws will also be getting covered in this part of the illustrations. Now friends starting with the illustration, Mr. Handsome transferred 10,000 debentures of 10 each to his wife Mrs. Gorgeous on 31st of December 2018 without consideration. So asset has been transferred by an individual to the spouse without adequate consideration. So here section 64 subsection 1 clause 4 will be applicable right then so debentures has been provided to his wife and that too without consideration so applicability of the clubbing provisions the company paid interest of 60,000 in July 2019 an interest income has been earned from the debentures and any income from asset transferred without adequate consideration to the spouse will be clubbed in the hands of the individual will be clubbed in the hands of the transferor. So 60,000 interest which was deposited by Mrs. Gorgeous with a finance company in August 2019. So here 60,000 has been deposited with a finance company. The finance company paid 50,000 up to March 2020. So friends, two stream of incomes, one from debentures and another interest from debentures which were deposited in a finance company with the finance company on 60,000, 50,000 interest has been earned by Gorgeous, by Mrs. Gorgeous. So friends, here you can understand that income from the asset transferred, which is debentures, interest from debentures is 60,000. It is no doubt that it will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Handsome. It will be income of Mr. Handsome and the applicable provision is clause 4 of section 1 of section 64 right now moving on to the next stream of income which is 50,000 the income is nothing but accretion income wherein the income is not coming from the asset which has been transferred however it is from the accretion the accretion income as we have discussed, as we have understood, accretion income is never taxable in the hands of the transferor. It won't be taxed in the hands of Mr. Handsome in this case. It will be a separate income of Mrs. Gorgeous and accordingly it will not be clubbed as per the provisions of section 64. So friends on your screen. We have been asked how would both the interest income be charged to tax in the assessment year 2021. So first is interest from debentures. It is nothing but 60,000. For this, section 64.1.4 will be applicable. Will be applicable 
as as an asset has been transferred to the spouse and that too without adequate consideration meaning without any consideration the asset has been transferred accordingly any income from the asset transferred will be clubbed in the hands of the transferor so this particular income so interest from debentures you should say is taxable in the hands of mr handsome and the applicable provision is section 64 1 4 clubbing provisions will no doubt be applying now the second portion friends interest from finance company right interest from finance company nature of the income is accretion income right nature of the income is accretion income and accordingly clubbing provisions won't be applicable so interest from finance company this will be taxable in the hands of mrs gorges right since clubbing provisions won't be applicable on such an accretion income so friends 60000 amount which is interest on debentures will be taxable in the hands of mr handsome clubbing provisions will be applicable and 50000 interest from the finance company will be taxable in the hands of mrs gorges so friends the treatment of both the income is 60000 will be taxable in the hands of mr handsome clubbing provisions is applicable and 50000 which is accretion income and it has nothing to do with the asset which has been transferred right accordingly such an accretion income will be taxable in the individual capacity of the person who has invested the amount here mrs gorges has invested the amount out of the interest from debentures and accordingly the amount is taxable in the hands of mrs gorges in her individual capacity and clubbing provisions won't be applicable in such a case So friends this concludes illustration this illustration moving on to the next one Mrs A wife of Mr A is a partner in a firm a capital contribution to the firm as on 1st of April 2019 was 10 lakhs out of his 7 lakhs was contributed out of her own sources and 3 lakhs was contributed out of the gift from her husband so friends mrs a is a partner in a firm and here capital contribution to a firm is in question wherein out of 10 lakhs 3 lakhs has been contributed from the funds which has been gifted by her husband right so friends out of 10 lakhs 3 lakhs was contributed by her husband 
so explanation 3 will be applicable right when we are understood that a ratio is supposed to be applied for determining the applicability of the clubbing provisions a ratio will be applied on any remuneration received from the firm we are yet to go to the part what is the type of remuneration which has been received by mrs a in this case however i am just reiterating the provisions of explanation 3 to section 64 wherein amount contributed on behalf of the spouse to determine the clubbing provisions to determine what amount will be clubbed in the hands of an individual in the hands of the transferor will be determined by a ratio numerator is nothing but amount contributed by such an individual divided by total amount of contribution and this ratio is to be seen as on 1st of april of the relevant previous year in which of the relevant previous year you can say not in the year in which amount is contributed but as on 1st of April you can say closing balance of the preceding previous year is to be seen for example in the year 1 if the amount has been contributed on 1st of April 2019 let's say for example then that amount will be considered however if the amount has been contributed in 1st of May on 1st of May 2019 then that amount that contribution won't be counted correct so we have to see balance as on 1st of April 2019 if the previous year is 1920 so we have to see the balance as on the first date of the relevant previous year the days which are I mean for the remaining number of days the ratio is not affected it is only affected out of the balance which is prevalent on the 1st of April correct so friends second para as further capital was needed by the firm she further invested 5 lakhs on 31st of May 2019 so friends as far as the ratio is concerned we are concerned with balance or cut start we are concerned with the balance is on 1st of April 2019 any amount contributed thereafter won't be relevant correct won't be relevant for both numerator as well as denominator and in this case the amount contributed on 31st of March 2019 will be relevant for calculating balance for 1st of April 2020 so friends as far as this provision is concerned it won't affect the ratio at all numerator wise also not denominator also wise not the firm paid interest on capital 2 lakhs and share of profit 1 lakh for the financial year 1920 so two streams of income you can see over here wherein interest as well as profit has been paid interest on capital we will consider right however share of profit you can observe that share of profit is not taxable in the hands of the partner since the income itself is exempted under 10 2a section 10 clause 2a since mrs a won't be taxable cut start since mrs a won't be taxable on the share of profit this income won't be clubbed in the hands of Mr. A. The income that will be clubbed is interest on capital of 2 lakhs. Provided such an amount is taxable in the hands of Mrs. A. Meaning the 12% criteria wherein we have discussed 
in 40A section, section 40, not 40A, 40B, wherein deduction to the extent of deduction allowed to the firm, the interest income will be taxable in the hands of Mrs. will be taxable in the hands of the partner. Correct? So, if the interest rate which is paid to the partner is exceeding 12% then anything in exceeding of 12% is not allowed to the firm as deduction. So friends, we will have to assume in this case, we will have to assume that interest on capital of 2 lakhs which is paid to Mrs. A in this case has been allowed as deduction to the firm meaning the interest on capital is equal to or less than 12% per annum and the same is allowed as deduction to the firm and accordingly it will be taxable in the hands of Mrs. A. So this assumption we will have to put as the question is silent on the rate of cut start as the question is silent on the rate of interest which is being paid to the partner. So we will assume that it is as per the agreement and the rate of interest is equal to or less than 12% per annum. So friends, two streams of income, interest on capital and share of profit, interest on capital, certain assumption needs to be put and clubbing provisions will be applicable. Share of profit as nothing is taxable in the hands of Mrs. A as share of profit is exempted under section 10 2a accordingly clubbing provisions won't be applicable advise mr a as to the applicability of the provisions of section 6414 6414 is nothing but assets transferred to the spouse without adequate consideration and here asset which has been transferred is 3 lakhs have been contributed as capital contribution by the husband. The applicability of section 6414 is needs to be seen in respect of the above referred transactions. So friends on your screen. So referred transaction, let's go. I mean, for clubbing provisions, we will have to see the interest on capital only. Share of profit won't be considered. So first is interest on capital. We'll have to first determine the ratio. Or you can say as per explanation 3 of section 64. Mm, interest received. From the capital contribution right from the capital contribution interest received from the capital contribution where a certain portion of the capital is contributed by is con cut start is contributed by the individual on behalf on behalf of the spouse a proportionate 
a proportionate amount contributed a proportionate amount received will be plugged in the hands of the individual transferer correct so friends meaning interest on capital which has been received this a certain proportionate amount will be taxable will be clubbed in the hands of the individual transferer and the proportion we will calculate over here so friends interest income is 2 lakhs right 2 lakhs into 3 lakhs has been contributed by the husband out of 10 lakhs so 3 divided by 10 this will be the amount which should be considered for clubbing provision and the ratio is nothing but denominator is 3 lakhs which is the amount which has been contributed by the husband and the total contribution as on 1st of april 2019 was 10 lakhs we have to consider the balance as on 1st of april 2019 correct so a further capital which was invested by the husband of 5 lakhs in the second para mentioned in the second para of the illustration won't be considered as the same was contributed on 31st of may 2019 as per the provisions we have to consider balance as on 1st of april 2019 only as per the provisions we have to consider balance as on 1st of april of the relevant previous year only so friends interest to be clubbed is nothing but 2 lakhs into 3 divided by 10 which is nothing but 20000 into 3 which is 60000 will be clubbed in the hands of the interest to be clubbed in the hands of mr a right and friends further capital invested let's you will have to put a note for this further capital invested of 5 lakhs will not be considered in the above ratio will not be considered in the above ratio because balance as on april 1 of the relevant previous year is to be considered as per explanation 3 to section 64 so friends one point of learning wherein balance as on 1st of april of the relevant previous year is strictly to be considered for the purpose of calculating the ratio correct friends so income which will be clubbed in the hands of mr a in this case is 60000 and friends second part was share of profit share of profit since the same is exempt correct since the same is exempt under section 102a correct in the hands of 
Let me see, see. Accordingly, nothing will be club in the hands of. Accordingly, clubbing provisions are not applicable. Only because the income is exempt, clubbing provisions will not be applicable in this case. So, whatever is taxable in the hands of Mrs. A will be considered. Also, the interest of 12% that we are talking about. We will cut start. We will have to put an assumption for this as well. We have assumed that interest on capital, interest on capital is less than or equal to 12% per annum. Only because, as we have discussed that if anything is exceeding 12% per annum then the same amount which is exceeding amount in excess of 12% will be disallowed to the firm and it will be taxable in the hands of the firm so anything in excess of 12% is not taxable in the hands of the partner which is receiving the interest and for the purpose of applicability of clubbing provisions if certain portion of amount is exempted then that should not be considered for the purpose of clubbing right so as in the example of share of profit if as if cut start as in the example of share of profit nothing was taxable in the hands of mrs a and accordingly clubbing provisions were not applicable and similarly we have put an assumption for interest on capital that the entire amount is supposed to be taxable in the hands of Mrs. A and accordingly the clubbing provisions will apply. So this note has been is necessary to be mentioned in the solution. So friends two streams of income interest on capital will be club share of profit since exempt it won't be club and balance as on 1st of April 2019 balance as on 1st of April of the relevant year is always to be considered for numerator as well as denominator. So friends this concludes this illustration. So friends in next illustration Mr. Rex has gifted a house property valued at 90 lakhs to his wife who in turn has gifted the same to Mrs. A, their daughter-in-law. So friends, two transaction wherein husband is providing an asset which is a house property to her wife and then wife has transferred that particular asset to her daughter-in-law. If we see the applicability of clubbing provisions, so there will be two scenarios in this. Here, Mr. X, which is the husband, is transferring to her spouse without adequate consideration. Asset transferred without adequate consideration to the spouse is taxable. I mean, the clubbing provisions will be applicable on the income earned on the transferred asset and section 6414 will be applicable correct then in the second part of the transaction where and separately also we will have to consider the nature of the asset correct friends the nature of the asset in this case is house property so section 6414 is subject to Section 27. Section 27 is nothing but deemed ownership, meaning asset which is transferred to the spouse should be other than house property for applicability of clubbing provisions. If a house property is transferred, then clubbing provisions are not applicable. However, section 27 will be applicable, which is nothing but deemed ownership wherein the transferer will be deemed to be owner 
for the purpose of taxability of income from house property and if other assets are transferred then they will fall under the net of clubbing provisions fine so 6414 would have been applicable in this case if this would have been an asset other than house property since a house property is transferred section 27 will be applicable and deemed ownership will be applicable if you ask me the taxability in the hands of the transferor yes in both the scenarios taxability will remain in the hands of the transferor the only thing is under the income from house property friends this a 30% standard deduction will also be available to the assessee so in a way some sort of benefit is there if an exemption if the income is taxable under the head income from house property i mean the specific head exemption will be applicable to the assessee if it would have been a business income then deductions of business income would have been achievable when cut start would have been allowable to the ssc so over here since income from house property is involved accordingly taxability will remain in the hands of the transferor however only the section is changing it won't be clubbing provision section it will be section 27 correct friends so this was the first part and second part is transferability cut start transfer of the asset by an individual which is wife wife of mr rex is transferring the asset to her daughter in law this is also the clubbing provisions will get applicable cut start the clubbing provisions will get applicable in this case and this will fall under clause 6 of sub section 1 of section 64 and for clause 6 if you remember if you note or if you read the provisions it is not subject to section 27 friends so where an asset is transferred to the spouse section 27 will be applicable however when an asset is transferred to daughter in law section 27a is not applicable there is no specific mention under cut start there is no specific mention under cut start under section 27 neither under clause 6 of sub section 1 of section 64 also friends mr x transferring to her daughter in law mrs a this also cannot be denied this can be termed as an indirect transfer by mr x to mrs a through her wife correct so even this transaction will fall under clause 6 of section 1 of section 64 so whether her wife is transferring to mrs a to her daughter in law or mr x is transferring to her to his daughter in law it doesn't matter the taxability will remain the same that is the clubbing provisions will continue to apply so friends in this two lines you can see there are number of interpretations already in placed correct we will get back to it i mean the number of possibilities that we can see over here we will note it down in this solution right so friends what is expected out of us is first of all additional info is the house was let out at 50000 per month throughout the year okay so the rental income from the house property so there is an income from the asset transferred correct compute the total income of mr x and mrs a so we have to compute total income of mr x and mrs a and here only one source of income has been given it is nothing but 50000 per month that is income from house property income from letting out of the house property so whether it will be taxable in the hands of mr x or mrs a needs to be determined and accordingly income from house property needs to be calculated 
will you answer be different if the said property was gifted to his son who is husband of mrs a so in case of gift to cut start so friends in case of gift to the son clubbing provisions are never applicable the only two relative specifically covered under section 64 are spouse of the individual and second is daughter in law of the individual only two relatives are covered for the purpose of clubbing provisions son is not getting covered under the clubbing provisions correct and this we have discussed earlier also so friends maybe i mean the possible uh, reason behind it may be that generally son is a working person he should have a certain portion of income so the basic purpose of you know um, transferring the asset is to evade taxes is to reduce the tax liability of the person transferring the asset so in this case the individual by transferring his or her respective asset to the spouse or to daughter in law the basic intention is the spouse's income or the daughter in law's income is lesser is on a lesser side and accordingly excess levable on spouse or daughter in law will be less when the same income is taxed in the hands of the individual transferer so the basic intention is that and accordingly to avoid such a practice the taxability will remain in the hands of the individual transferer correct so keeping that as a base i mean why son of the individual may not be covered is they generally have a different source of income so transferring them an asset will won't matter in a way because they have a separate source of income which will be taxable in the hands so there won't be a cut start so there won't be a possibility of evading taxes where an asset has been transferred to a son accordingly you won't find any clubbing provisions wherein if asset is transferred to a son and clubbing provision will be applicable such a provision is not there under section 64 provisions clubbing provisions are applicable only when an asset is transferred to spouse only when an asset is transferred to daughter in law correct so to answer the second part will your answer be different if the said property was gifted to his son no if the said property has been gifted to his son the taxability in the hands of mr x will be nil as per the provisions of i mean the clubbing provisions won't be applicable as well as since a house property is transferred even section 27 won't be applicable as for deemed ownership as per clause 1 section 27 for deemed ownership only transfer to spouse is considered for the purpose of deemed ownership and even son is not included under section 27 so friends neither section 27 will be applicable neither clubbing provisions of section 6414 or 6416 will be applicable where an asset has been gifted to the son correct friends so total income friends in the hands of the ssc let's note it down let's note down the possibilities of applicability of clubbing provisions so first stands was mr rex gifting house property to his wife correct in this case section 27 which is deemed owner 
will be applicable since house property has been transferred correct friends now has been since house property has been transferred without adequate consideration accordingly mr x will be deemed to be the owner of the property for for taxability of in the hands of taxability of income in the hands of for taxability of income under the head income from house property correct friends so friends this was the first part now second part we can say that you know mr x has transferred the asset to mrs a the daughter in law indirectly wife of mr x in turn has transferred the asset to her daughter in law daughter in law mrs a correct this can be termed as an indirect transfer of the house property this can be termed as an indirect transfer of the house property by mr x to mrs a correct accordingly section 6414 will be applicable in the hands of mr a mr x correct so either you say that you know wife has transferred the house property to her daughter in law 6414 will be cut start 6414 will be applicable in the hands of the wife of mr x however it can also be termed as an indirect transfer by mr x through wife through her wife to her daughter in law correct so section 64 cut start so section 6414 will be applicable to mr x also right so we have assumed in this case that it is an indirect transfer and accordingly mr x will be continued to be taxable the income from such an asset which has been transferred without adequate consideration income from such an asset will be clubbed in the hands of the transferer individual so in the second part you know as we have discussed that income from house property the house property asset transferred there is no distinction between the asset which is being transferred if under clause 2 where an asset has been transferred without adequate consideration to the spouse then there is a differentiation between house property and other assets house property will go under section 27 and other assets will fall under 6412 correct however when an asset is transferred to daughter in law there is no such distinction of the assets cut start there is no such distinction cut start there is no such distinction of the assets which has been transferred 
any asset transferred to the daughter-in-law will fall under 6416. This should be 6. Correct. So as far as income from house property is concerned, friends. Computation of income from house property. Rental income. For 12 months. Since it has been let out for the entire year. As mentioned in the illustration. So it should be 6 lakhs. Less. Standard deduction at the rate of 30%, it will be 1,80,000 and no further details on municipal taxes or um, interest paid on the loan borrowed, there is no such information. So income from house property is nothing but 4,20,000. Correct. So this income from house property, if we see part one, then it will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X, right? If the part A is concerned, part one is concerned, wherein the house property is transferred to the spouse. In that case, four like twenty will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X. Also, in the second part. 4 lakh 20 will continue to be taxable in the hands of in the hands of Mr. X. Nothing will be taxable in the hands of Mrs. A in this case. So total income of of Mr. X is 4 lakh 20 correct i mean there are no details of other income in this case so we have assumed that this will be the total income we will write clubbing provisions or you can say as per section 27 right clause 1 read with Section 6416, correct friends, which is related to transfer of asset, asset transferred to the daughter in law without adequate consideration. So, both the sections will be applicable in this case since there were two transactions in this. Either you can say section 27 is applicable where the asset has been transferred to the spouse and if you say that Mr. Rex is transferred to daughter-in-law and not to the wife then 6416 will be applicable ultimately either of the provisions will be applicable either 27 will be applicable or 6416 will be applicable both the provisions cannot be applied simultaneously So if you read it together, I mean this sentence could be, I mean since both the provisions are not applicable simultaneously, you can say as per section 27.1 this has been applicable when the asset has been transferred to spouse. However, however ultimately we are saying that the asset has been transferred to daughter-in-law. So ideally friends. Section 16, section 6416 only should be applicable. Section 27 and section 6416 cannot go hand in hand. Either clubbing provisions will be applicable or deemed ownership will be applicable. Here ultimately what we are trying to say is asset has been gifted to daughter-in-law without adequate consideration through wife of Mr. X. Correct. So ultimately 6416 will apply 
and not section 27 however we have i mean you can always mention this the applicability cut start you can always mention the applicability of section 27 section 64 by way of a note and here ultimately the transaction is mr rex has gifted the property to her daughter-in-law through her wife through his wife accordingly section 6416 will apply to mr rex so total income in the hands of mr rex is nothing but 4 lakh 20 thousand and total income in the hands of mrs a will be nil correct friends and friends once the second part wherein property is gifted to son of the individual in this case as we have discussed clubbing provisions won't be applicable clubbing provisions won't be applicable also section 27.1 team ownership also won't be applicable so friends this concludes this illustration part 1 and part 2 so taxability in the hands of mr x clubbing provisions would be applicable taxability in the hands of mrs a nothing is taxable as the entire amount is being clubbed in the hands of the transferer which is mr cut start which is mr x and if the asset has been transferred to the son then neither clubbing provisions as per section 64 is applicable neither deemed ownership section 27 1 is applicable both the provisions are not applicable friends so friends in next illustration Mr. Rajesh, out of his funds, had taken a fixed deposit for 25 lakhs bearing interest 10% per annum payable half yearly in the name of his wife. So, out of his own funds, friends, Mr. Rajesh has taken a fixed deposit. However, he has instructed the bank to deposit the interest income in the name of his wife. So here asset has been transferred to the spouse without adequate consideration and accordingly applicability of 6414 clubbing provisions will be applicable. In the name of his wife, correct? The interest earned during previous and 1920 of 2,50 was invested by his wife in another business. Which resulted in a net profit of 1 lakh for the year ended 31st March 2020. So, friends, accretion income from the asset transferred will not be clubbed, will be taxable in the hands of the transferee. Correct? So, net profit of 1 lakh will be taxable in the hands of the wife of Mr. Rajesh and interest earned of 250 will be taxable in the hands of mr rajesh will be clubbed in the hands of mr rajesh as per section 6414 how shall the interest on fd and income from business be taxed for the assessment year 2021 and also friends there is a case law which will be quoted over here which is relevant over here which is CIT versus MSS Rajan 2001 252 ITR 126 which has been held by Madras High Court the ruling has been done by Madras High Court so friends we have to determine the taxability of the interest income of FD 
as we have stated interest income on fd will be clubbed in the hands of mr rajesh as per section 6414 correct as this is a transfer without adequate consideration to the spouse correct and any accretion from the asset transfer will be taxable in the hands of any accretion of the income transferred will be taxable in the hands of the transferee and nothing will be clubbed in the hands of mr rajesh in this case correct so i'm not putting i'm not mentioning a detailed note over here right because this is what we have already discussed so interest on fd 250 will be clubbed in the hands of mr rajesh as per section 6414 correct friends and accretion income from the asset transfer will be taxable in the hands of the transferee that is clubbing provisions won't be applicable correct friends and the income is 1 lakh this will be clubbed this won't be clubbed in the hands of mr rajesh it will be taxable in the hands of wife of mr rajesh correct and for the purpose of accretion of income and for the purpose of accretion of income friends the relevant case law is mss rajan 2001 wherein the facts of the case were similar to the example that we have discussed wherein interest on fd interest from the transferred asset such an interest income was invested in a business and thereafter the net profit from a business which was earned by the transferee which was earned by the wife of by wife of mr rajesh in such a scenario in such a scenario accretion of income won't be clubbed in the hands of mr rajesh it it will start won't be clubbed in the hands of mr rajesh it will be clubbed in the hands of it will be taxable in the hands of the transferee in the hands of wife of mr rajesh and the case law the relevant case law which can be quoted in such a scenario is cit versus mss rajan 2001 as held by madras high court correct friends so this is the end of the illustration now friends moving on to the next illustration which is in the form of a case law which is you know relevant for this provisions correct relevant for the clubbing provisions wherein the issue under consideration is the definition of the professional qualification and knowledge which comes up in 641 clause 2 so friends to reiterate clause 2 of section 1 of section 64 in this case where an ssc where the individual has a substantial interest in a company or a concern and such a company or concern is paying a remuneration to being a remuneration to the wife of the individual to the spouse of the individual in such a case 
clause 2 subsection 1 of section 64 will be applicable correct and one of the exception was inserted by way of proviso wherein the exception is if the spouse has a requisite professional qualification has a requisite knowledge experience in that particular field which justifies the payment of the remuneration in the form of salary commission or other payment which justifies such a remuneration paid to the spouse of the individual who has substantial interest then nothing will be clubbed in the hands of the individual however however in absence of such a professional qualification knowledge skill experience in absence of such professional qualification the income the remuneration will be clubbed in the hands of the individual correct so friends the term professional qualification has been interpreted by the madras high court in the case of cit versus srimati r bharti in 1999 right friends so madras high court ruling cit versus srimati r bharti 1999 240itr 697 and the issue under consideration is interpretation of the terms professional qualifications and knowledge whether model having skill competence and experience in her line of business can be considered as a professional or not so friends the facts of the case are the individual has a substantial interest in a company so the company is paying a remuneration to a model and the model is wife of the individual correct spouse of the individual in such a case assessing officer has denied such a remuneration wherein such a remuneration has been considered taxable in the hands of the individual contending that model doesn't has contending that model doesn't have the requisite qualification accordingly nothing will be taxable in the hands of the spouse of the individual everything will be clubbed in the hands of the individual correct in this case what i could observe was that the definition of professional that the definition of First of all, the qualification. There are two terms: professional qualification. So, the term qualification, as observed by High Court, that it should be read on a wider note. It has a wider meaning. It should not be termed as a qualification. It should not be termed as a degree from a recognized university, wherein there is a specific hours of study, and then only you are given. I mean after you pass the examination then a certificate is awarded by the recognized university so the term qualification is not to be interpreted strictly by that meaning the term qualification can be termed I mean if a person has a required skill if a person has a required experience to perform a task then even that will be a qualification so here madras high court has given a wider meaning to the term qualification by not only interpreting it as or it should not be interpreted only to a degree provided by a recognized university it has a wider meaning and if a person has a requisite skill if a person has a requisite experience to perform a task then even that can be termed as qualification correct friends so professional qualification a person is said to be professional if he is if he has a knowledge to perform that task right if he has an experience and knowledge in performing a task then he can be said to be a professional so even professional has to be given a wider meaning this is what has been held and observed by the madras high court in this case law in this ruling so the term professional and the term qualification has been provided with a wider meaning and in this case the 
work performed by the model has been termed as you know that the model has a requisite qualification has requisite skill competence knowledge in performing a task and accordingly the exception to the clubbing provisions the exception to clause 2 of subsection 1 of section 64 will be applicable So any remuneration, the remuneration received by the model in this case was held as not to be clubbed in the hands of her spouse, was not to be clubbed in the hands of the individual. It will be taxable in the hands of the model as she had the requisite skill, she had skill, competence and experience in the relevant field. Though it is not that you know cut start though it is not that that cut start though it is not the case wherein you know she may not be certified from a recognized university even if she has skill competence and experience in the relevant field that will be termed as professional qualification and accordingly the exception Accordingly, the exception by way of a proviso will be applicable in this case and clubbing provisions won't be applicable in such a scenario. Correct friends? So friends, High Court's observations and decision. The terms do not necessarily, the terms which are professional qualification and knowledge, the terms do not necessarily connote a qualification conferred by a recognized university after examining the candidate who has undergone a course of study correct it should not be strictly read in those terms wherein a recognized university is involved accordingly the term qualification must be given a wide meaning as referring to the qualities which are required to be possessed by a person performing the work that it does so long as that work is capable of being cut start capable of being regarded as technical or professional correct friends so wider meaning is to be given as referring to the qualities which are required to be possessed while performing the work so long as that work is capable of being regarded as technical or professional correct the word professional this term is a term capable of very broad meaning as well and would encompass a variety of occupation. The person having skill, experience and competent in a line of work can be regarded as professionally qualified for the purpose of section 6412. So friends, skill, experience and competence, these are the terms used and if the person has skill, if the person has experience and competence, then in such a case, the person will be said to be professionally qualified for the purpose of interpreting the provisions of 6412. Accordingly, Madras High Court held that a model having skill, competence and experience in her line of business can be regarded as a professional. Correct friends? So, Madras High Court has interpreted the provisions of the Act correct wherein this specific case won't be covered i mean the provisions have been in existence to give a broader picture correct and this specific situation may not be getting covered in the provisions of the existing act so the court has interpreted the provisions has interpreted the intention of the legislature wherein they have given a broader meaning to the term professional and qualification and if the person has the requisite skill, competence and experience in the particular field then they are, they can be termed as professionally qualified for the purpose of interpreting the provisions of 6412 the relevant term of obtaining a degree from recognized university won't be relevant in this case correct friends so friends 
Madras High Court was in the favor of Srimati R. Bharti in this case, wherein remuneration received by the model was not clubbed in the hands of the individual who has substantial interest. The taxability remained in the hands of Srimati R. Bharti. Friends, this concludes the case law, the only case law in the clubbing provision. Friends, continuing with the next illustration, Rahul has four children consisting two daughters, two sons. The annual income of two daughters is 10,000, 5,000 and sons were 7,000 and 1,000 respectively. Correct friends? So by this, I mean let's read the entire illustration. The daughter who has income of 5,000 which is the second daughter. Daughter who has income of 5,000 was suffering from a disability specified under section 80U. Compute the Cut start. Compute the amount of income earned by minor children to be clubbed in the hands of Rahul. Correct friends? So, earned by the minor children. Correct? So, here friends, there is no mention who is minor and who is major. So, in absence of information, we will assume that all the children are minor. First, if this assumption needs to be put. And, Two daughters and two sons. So, as per section, friends, as per section 641A, wherein income of the minor child will be clubbed in the hands of the parent. And here, I mean, there are specific facts which are missing, wherein whether the child has, I mean, what is the source of this income? 10,000, 5,000, 7,000. What is the source of this income? Whether the source of the Start whether the source of this income is from um, an application of skill, knowledge, or manual work of the minor child. If yes, then nothing will be clubbed in the hands of the parent. And also, whether I mean, in case of either of the parents whose whose income is more whose income is greater that all cut start that information is also not visible in the illustration i mean if rahul's wife has a greater income then the income should be clubbed in the hands of the spouse in the hands of the parent whose income is greater the clubbing provision should be applicable in the hands of the parent Cut start in the hands of the parent whose income is greater, right? So even that information we could see, you know, that is missing. So there will be a set of assumptions, friends, which needs to be mentioned along with the solution, right? So friends, on your screen. So we have to compute the amount of income earned by the minor children to be clubbed in the hands of Rahul. First we will compute the amount of income and then we can mention the assumptions. Income earned by minor children to be clubbed. In the hands of Rahul for the assessment year 2021, correct? So in this case, friends, first daughter applicable provision is. Section 64 1 1 A correct. So, first daughter 10,000. So, friends, exemption under section 32 will be applicable, right? Wherein for each of the minor child, the SSC is eligible for an exemption of 1500. So, minus 
1500 correct so income to be clubbed from the first order is nothing but 8500 then second order second order friends an additional information has been given section 80 u is applicable accordingly nothing will be clubbed in the hands of rahul or either of the parents you can say income will be taxable in the hands of the second daughter correct and also there will be no question of exemption under section 1032 only because no income is offered of the second minor daughter then first son amount is 7000 the treatment will be similar as first daughter exemption under section 32 1500 income to be clubbed is nothing but 5500 and the third and the last son which is second son in this case the amount is 1000 exemption under section 1032 is no doubt for each and every minor child however it is restricted to 1500 or any amount which is lower whichever is less so exemption here will be 1000 only so, income to be club i mean you cannot say that remaining 500 amount should be adjusted against other income of minor child correct so you won't cut start so friends you won't get a negative amount over here the amount will be restricted to the income of the minor child which is clubbed so income to be club in this case is nil correct so friends income to be clubbed is 8500 for the first daughter second daughter is nil because of applicability of section 80 u and for first son is 5500 and second son is nil because the income is less than 1500 and friends assumptions first of all we have assumed We have assumed that all the children are minor for the purpose of applicability of section 64 1a correct second second the point which we discussed was mm -hmm. two daughters two son that is fine okay children has not earned any income by way of manual work correct or by way of application of skill knowledge correct because this is specifically exempted under section 64 1a if 
the child if the minor child has earned income through manual work then nothing will be clubbed in the hands of the parent also if income has been earned by way of skill or by way of a knowledge then nothing will be clubbed in the hands of the parent correct also we have assumed that that rahul's income is greater for the purpose of applicability of section 64 1a for clubbing the income of minor child minor child minor children correct also the so situation will be that you know as we have seen that this criteria of greater income taxability in the hands of either of the parents is relevant only for a particular year and once it is decided that a particular income will be taxed in the hands of a parent right let's say in the hands of cut start let's say in the hands of husband the income will be clubbed so in such a scenario it will continue for the succeeding years also correct friends it will continue for the succeeding years also unless and until the assessing officer decides otherwise correct so an assumption here also needs to be made that in the preceding years it was decided that income will be clubbed in the hands of rahul i mean in that preceding year also rahul had a greater income when compared to his wife and accordingly it was decided that it will be clubbed in the hands of rahul and the current previous year which is 1920 is the succeeding year and income of the minor children will be continued to be taxable in the hands of rahul So we have assumed that Rahul's income is greater for the purpose of applicability. Also, in continuation of point three above, right, which is this one. In continuation of point three above, it is assumed that. is assume that in the preceding years in the preceding years in the preceding year as well the total income total income of of rahul was greater than his wife and his spouse for the purpose of determining the applicability applicability of section 64 one a correct friends so these are the set of assumptions which we had to put considering considering the facts of the case these assumptions had to be put and based on these assumptions based on this set of assumptions the income to be clubbed in the hands of rahul is 8500 plus 5500 meaning the total income which will be clubbed in the hands of rahul as per section 641a is 9000 plus 5000 is 14000 correct friends so friends this concludes the illustration so friends the next illustration a proprietary business was started by soham in the year 2017 as on 
1st of April 2018, his capital in business was 10 lakhs. His wife gifted 6 lakhs on 30th of September 2018. Such sum is invested by Soham in his business on the same date. So the capital on 1st of April 2018 was 10 lakhs. It was increased to 6 lakhs wherein 10 lakhs is his own contribution and his wife's contribution is 6 lakhs. So if we say as on 1st of April 2019, total contribution is 16 lakhs, out of which 6 lakhs is contributed by her wife, by his wife, and 10 lakhs is contributed by Soham himself. Soham earned profits from his proprietary business for the previous year 1819 and previous year 1920 as 5 lakhs. Compute the income to be clubbed in the hands of Soham's wife for assessment year 2021 with reasons. We are we have to compute income to be clubbed. We have to compute income to be clubbed for the previous year 1920. We have to compute we have to compute the income which will be clubbed in the hands of Soham's wife, right? So computation. Competition of income to be up in the hands of Soham's wife, correct? So for this, let's understand, I mean, what will be the ratio first? So, you might have recollect that the relevant section which will be applicable is explanation 3 to section 64.1, correct? And Explanation 3 says that whatever income is earned from the asset transferred by the spouse without adequate consideration, whatever asset is transferred and income is earned from thereon, a proportion will be applied, a ratio will be applied and that ratio we will be calculating, cut start and that ratio will be calculated as on 1st of April 2019. I mean the relevant previous year in this case is 1920 accordingly ratio the numerator and denominator as on 1st of April 2019 will be considered correct and in this case Soham has started the business from 1st of April 2018 so for 1819 if you see as on 1st of April cut start as on 1st of April 2018 the capital in the business was 10 lakhs, right? So as on April 2018, 1st of April 2018, the balance was 10 lakhs. And this is Oham's contribution, correct? Right? Then comes, is there any addition during the year? Yes, his wife gifted 6 lakhs on 3rd of, cut start, on 30th of September. So, addition on September 30, 2018. This is Soham's wife contribution. Soham's wife contribution, which is 6 lakhs. Then, is there any further contribution? No. There is only addition of profits. Soham cut start. Soham earned profits from his proprietary business for financial year for previous year 1819. It is 3 lakhs. So, add. Profits for financial year for previous year 1819. This is again friend. Friends, this is again Soham's contribution because this is 
because this profit has been earned from the contribution made by Soham. I mean, we are only seeing, we are only supposed to see balance as on 1st of April of the relevant year. And as on 1st of April of the relevant year, the balance was 10 lakhs. And whatever profit has been earned will be assumed to be part of the capital which was held as on 1st of April 2018. I mean of the relevant year of the previous year so on 1st of April whatever was the contribution will be assumed that profits have been earned from such a balance relevant on April 1st correct friends so accordingly the profits of 1819 cannot be apportioned in this case only because we will be seeing balance as on 1st of April and balance as on 1st of April of 2018 in this case was only Soham's contribution which is 10 lakhs. So at profits which will be only Soham's contribution which is 3 lakhs. So total contribution you can see is 10 plus 6 plus 9, 10 plus 6 plus 3. 19 lakhs right so friends balance is on 1st of april 2019 we need to ascertain to determine the ratio as per explanation 3 so we got the denominator which is the total contribution of 19 lakhs and the numerator will be 10 lakhs and the numerator will be only Soham's wife contribution which is 6 lakhs. So friends, there are three components which is part of the total contribution. 10 lakhs which is Soham's contribution, 6 lakhs which is Soham's wife contribution on September 30 and profits earned during financial year 1819. This is solely Soham's contribution. So total Soham's contribution is 13 lakhs and Soham's wife contribution is 6 lakhs out of 19 lakhs. This will be the numerator and so the ratio applicable is 6 lakhs divided by 19 lakhs and this will be calculated on the profits earned in 1920 which is 5 lakhs for determining the clubbing provisions. So income to be clubbed in the hands of Soham's wife, correct friends, as per as per explanation 3 to section 641 will be balance I mean the ratio as on as on April 1 of 2019 is nothing but 6 lakhs it is nothing but 6 lakhs divided by 19 lakhs which is the total contribution and 6 lakhs is the contribution by Soham's wife into the amount of income, amount of profit earned in previous year 1920 which is 5 lakhs. So the ratio will be 5 lakhs 6 just a second 6 divided by 19 this ratio will be applied on 5 lakhs which is 157, 157 
0.8895. Correct friends. This is the amount which will be clubbed in the hands of Soham's wife. So out of the profit of 5 lakhs, total amount to be clubbed in the hands of Soham's wife is 1,57,895 as per explanation 3 to section 64.1. Correct friends? So this is the solution that we have derived. Here we end this part of the illustration friends. Now friends continuing with the next illustration. During the assessment year 2021, the following transactions occurred in respect of Mr. Punch Shield. Mr. Punch Shield gifted a flat to Mrs. Punch Shield to April on April 1, 2019. During the previous year 1920, Mrs. Panshil's gross income from house property was 1 lakh from such flat. Friends, income from house property, a house property which has been transferred without adequate consideration by an individual to his or her spouse. In that scenario, section 27 will be applicable and accordingly the individual transferer will be deemed owner of the property and income from house property will be assumed to be calculated in his hands, right? So, Mr. Panshin would be taxable for income from house property. So, gross income from house property is 1 lakh, right? And thereafter, 30% deduction and all will be available to the SSC. However, having said that, the amount which will be taxable, I mean the income from house, could start, I mean the income from house property will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Punch Sheen. Right? Second, Mr. Punch Sheen's minor son derived an income of 40,000 through a business activity involved in application of his state, cut start application of his skill and talent. In such a case, section 641A won't be applicable and income of the minor child won't be clubbed in the hands of, of the parent, right? And such an income will be taxed in the hands of minor child itself. Right. Now second, now third point, Mr. Panshil holds 30% profit share in a partnership firm. Mrs. Panshil received a remuneration of 50,000 from for accountant work and she possesses no technical or professional qualification. So friends, 64.1 clause 2 will be applicable wherein remuneration received as an accountant will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshil as he has substantial interest in the concern which is paying remuneration cut start which is paying remuneration to Mrs. Panshil where she doesn't possess any sort of qualification correct so it will be clubbed in his hands in the hands of Mr. Panshil both Mr. Panshil had a fixed deposit of 10 lakhs. He instructed the bank to credit the interest on the deposit at 10% to Balashil, son of his brother. So here you can see that there is transfer of income without transfer of asset. Transfer is cut start. Transfer of income without transfer of the asset, section 60 and accordingly such an income will continue to be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshin. Nothing will be taxable in the hands of son of his brother, which is Balashin. So 
So 10% on 10 lakhs, 1 lakh will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshil. Fifth, Mr. Panshil gifted 1 lakh to his minor son who invested. The same in the business and he derived income of 40,000 from the investment. So accretion of an income won't be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshil. It will be taxable in the hands of the minor son. Correct? Because it is an accretion of income and not and not income from the transferred asset. During the year, Mr. Panshil got a monthly pension of 5,000. He had no other income. Mrs. Panshil received remuneration of 5,000 per month from another part-time job. Correct? So, friends, here we will have to understand, I mean for clubbing of minors income, whose income will be greater, right? And here we can see that Panshil's monthly pension is 5000 as well as Mr. Mrs. Panshil's receive remuneration of 5000 per month from another part-time job, correct? So, both the parents' income is same over here, right? So, what we can assume over here, put an assumption that in absence of information, Mr. Panshil's income is greater that in absence of information, Mr. Panshil's income is greater, right? We will have to put an assumption for that purpose. Examine the tax implications of each transaction. Examine the tax implication of each cut start of each transaction and compute the total income of Mr. and Mrs. Panshil and the minor child. So compute the total income of each and every member of the family, right? So friends, on your screen. First is, Panshil gifted a flat to Mrs. Panshil. So in this case, income from house property will be part of Mr. Panshil's income. So what we can do is, we have to compute income of three person, Mr. and Mrs. Panshil and their son, right, minor son. Income of Mr. Panchashil. Then comes income of Mrs. Panchashil. This will help us to note down as and when the transaction comes, it will help us to note down the income in the respective head. So we have made three heads already, right? In the examination, what you can do is you can draw four columns, particulars, then three columns, income of Mr. Panshil, income of Mrs. Panshil and income of minor son. If at all it is not club, then it will be taxable in the hands of minor son. Correct? So, first is Mr. Panshil gifted a flat to Mrs. Panshil on 1st of April 2019. So, there is income from house property. Based on section 27.1, it will be taxable in the hands of, it will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshil, right? Section 27.1, it's a gross income. 1 lakh less standard deduction 
under section 24 at the rate of 30 percent right so it will be 30,000 deduction and there is no information on interest on borrowed capital or municipal taxes paid so in such a case 70,000 will be taxable net income from house property as gross was mentioned here you can see the gross word has been used right since gross word has been used we will assume that you know standard deduction is not considered we will provide standard deduction over here so net income from house property is nothing but 70,000 this is income from first transaction cut start so this is income from first transaction wherein 6412 or 6414 won't be applicable 6414 is nothing but asset transferred to the spouse without adequate consideration other than house property so clubbing provisions are applicable for asset which are other than house property and in the case of where the house property is transferred the concept of deemed ownership will come into play wherein section 27 clause 1 will be applicable to the individual transferer correct so this is what we have applied we have applied section 27 1 and since the word gross has been used in the adjustment one accordingly standard deduction at the rate of 30 percent will be available to the individual transferer and accordingly 70,000 only will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panchashin as income from house property correct now friends the next adjustment Mr. Panchashin's minus on derived an income of 40,000 through business activity involving application of his skill and talent right so in this case income clubbing provisions won't apply right since there is an exception in 641a if income has been earned by the minor child through manual work or through application of skill talent in such a case income will be continued to be taxable in the hands of the minor child so income of the minor child friends first one is income from application of his skill 40,000 Clubbing provisions of section 64 1a will not be applicable correct so it will be taxable in the hands of the minor son then comes Mr. Panshil holds 30% profit share in the partnership firm. Mrs. Panshil receives a remuneration and she possesses no technical or professional qualification. Accordingly, such an income will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshil. Correct. And friends, as far as I mean the clubbing of the income of a minor child is concerned, we have already discussed that you know um, prima facie from the adjustment which is mentioned over here sixth here we can see probably put the parents income are one and the same okay so and there is a clause as you are aware that parent income whosoever income is greater clubbing provisions will be applicable to that parent and here in this adjustment sixth we can see that both the parents income may be same so while clubbing minor son's income 
we will put an assumption that in absence of information it is assumed that Mr. Panshil's income is greater as compared to Mrs. Panshil, right? And then we can club in his hands. So for the time being, I mean we haven't come to that adjustment yet. So we are on the third adjustment. So section 64. 64 1. 4 will be applicable, correct? Wherein? 64 4 no, 64. 64 1 2 will be applicable. Wherein substantial interest as as Mr. Panshil's Panshil holds a substantial interest in the firm. And Mrs. Panshil does not hold any qualification in such a scenario, in such a scenario, the entire income will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshil. Correct, which is coming from the provisions of 6412. Now, fourth adjustment, friends. Mr. Panshil has a fixed deposit of 10 lakhs, and the income was being transferred to Balashil, which is son of his brother. Section 60 will be applicable. Income from fixed deposit you can say as per 16 wherein 10 1 lakh 1 lakh will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshim because without transferring of an asset income has been transferred correct accordingly section 60 will be applicable fifth point mr panshil gifted one lakh to his minor son who invested the same in the business and he derived income of 40000 from the said investment so friends, minor son has invested the amount in a business and from there 40,000 has been derived, correct? Now friends, what will happen is, the concept of accretion of income doesn't matter in this case because if the income is taxable in the hands of minor child, then it will be clubbed in the hands of the parent's income whose income is greater in the hands of that parent whose income is greater correct so in this adjustment the accretion of income we won't come right the accretion of income won't come and the income from business activity right the income from business activity will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Panshil, because in this case, because of sixth adjustment, we can see that income of Mr. and Mrs. Panshil may be equal, and in such a case, we will assume that Mr. Panshil's income is greater as compared to Mrs. Panshil, and and we will also assume that this is the first year of determining whose parent income is greater. Because there is a provision wherein in one year if it is decided that Mr. Panshil's income is greater for the succeeding years also this will remain the same wherein income will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Panshil only correct so 
here the accretion of income doesn't come into picture and for the adjustment income of minus one from investment in business to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Panshin assuming that his income is greater than his spouse and assuming and assuming that and assuming that this is the first year for clubbing minors income correct so the income is 40000 so the income is 40000 correct and the fifth adjustment is monthly pension of 5000 right monthly pension of 5000 and he had no other income and mr panshil received remuneration of 5000 per month from part time job so if we go to this adjustment what has been clubbed till now income of mr mrs panshil okay she will have this income right of 5000 per month part time job income from part time job Five thousand into twelve is nothing but sixty thousand. Correct. So this is the only income. Income of minor child is only application of his skills. Less and then everything has been clubbed in the hands of Mr. Panshil. So friends, monthly pension. It is nothing but. Sixty thousand, and since it will be taxable as, and since it will be a uncommuted pension, it will be taxable entirely, right? And this tender deduction, we will have to consider, and also for separately for a wife also, we will have to consider tender deduction. As per sixteen one a, right, fifty thousand, and accordingly, net salary income is nothing but ten thousand. So this amount will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Panshil. Similarly, less. And the deduction is nothing but fifty thousand. Net salary will be ten thousand. Correct. So, friends, total income of minus son is forty thousand. Total income of Mr. Panshil is ten thousand. and total income of mr panshil is 70000 plus 50000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120000 120
plus 1 lakh is 2 lakh 20 thousand and 40 thousand plus 10 thousand so 2 lakh 70 thousand is the total income of Mr. Panchi correct so friends this is what was the requirement right examine the tax implications of each and every transaction and compute the total income of mr and mrs panchil and their minor child this is what we have computed and we have covered each and every transaction over here correct so friends this ends the illustration this concludes the illustration friends before concluding we'll have to keep a note of one more point over here in the first adjustment there will be an applicability of section there will be an applicability of section 1032 as well okay so whatever income is clubbed of minor child in the hands of either of the parent in such a scenario exemption under section 1032 is available right of up to 1500 so this will be clubbed over here in the fourth point so 40000 friends will be net of 1500 the net income is 38500 Correct. So this shouldn't be bold. The answer is the correct answer is thirty eight thousand five hundred. Correct, because we will have to give an effect of exemption under section ten thirty two as well. And as far as other income are concerned, point number one was income from house property that is fine. Then does not hold the qualification that is for spouse income fixed deposit is section 60 minor son's income is only 40,000 on which 38,500 is made applicable correct so 2 lakh 70,000 minus 1,500 correct so it should be 68,500 should be the correct answer wherein the total income of Mr. Panchil is 2,68,500 which is the correct answer. So friends with this we conclude the solution. Now friends continuing with the next illustration on your screen. Compute the total income of Mr. and Mrs. X for assessment year 2021 from below mentioned information. First is income from profession of Mr. X computed. It's 5 lakhs. So profession income. Income of minor unmarried daughter for cut start. Daughter from singing. Income of minor unmarried daughter from singing is 50,000. So application of skill. Nothing will be clubbed in the hands of either of the parents. Income of minor son who suffers from disability specified in section ATU it will be taxable in the hands of minor son and nothing will be clubbed salary income computed for Mrs. X and this is computed since you can understand that in bracket computed word has been used so standard deduction has already been provided correct and as far as the income of Mr. X is concerned is 5 lakhs and income of Mrs. X is 250. So income will be curbed or start income will be curbed in the hands of the parent whose income is greater and accordingly if any income is supposed to be clubbed of the minor child then it will be clubbed in the hands of then it will be clubbed in the hands of 
the parent which is Mr. X. The parent whose income is greater. Correct. Income of the minor child. Income of the minor married daughter. Cut start. Income of the minor married daughter from company deposit is 1 lakh. It will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X. Cash gift received by minor daughter on 31st of December 2019 from friend of Mr. X on winning of singing competition. So you can effectively say that this is from winning. You can effectively say that this is from winning from application of skill. So even this won't be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X and this will be taxable in the hands of minor daughter. So friends you can see that there are three children. One minor unmarried daughter. One minor married daughter and then minor son. Correct. So we are expected to compute the total income of Mr. and Mrs. X for assessment year 2021. Correct. On your screen. So two column income from total income of Mr. X. total income of Mrs. X. Correct. First is income from profession which is already computed which is net income income from profession it will be taxable as business income profit and gain from business or profession and the entire amount will be taxable. Correct. Income of minor unmarried daughter from sinking. We can put a note section over here or we can mention over here itself. Income of minor daughter from sinking. Since it is Application of income since earning earning is from application of skills of the daughter. In this case, nothing will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X. Correct? The same will be taxable in the hands of the minor unmarried daughter. Correct? So, as far as Mr. X income is concerned, nothing will be taxable in his hands. Now the third adjustment income of minor son who suffers from disability specified in section 3 section ATU income of minor son suffering from Disability is for section ATU, correct? Income will be taxable in the hands of income will be taxable in the hands of 
income will be taxable in the hands of Mr. X. No, it will be taxable in the hands of minor son. As per section 64 1A. Correct? So, nothing can be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X. Then fourth point, salary income of Mrs. X. It is computed accordingly. Standard deduction has already been given. So, 1 lakhs. Not 1 lakh, 2 lakh 50,000 is the salary income of Mrs. X. Now, fifth adjustment is income of minor married daughter from company deposit. Now, this income will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X. Income from deposits of minor married daughter to be clubbed in the hands of to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. X as his income is greater is greater than Mrs. X and assuming this is the first year of clubbing of income correct so the amount which will be taxable is 1 lakh less exemption Exemption under section 1032. I just remember in one of the adjustment I feel income from a minor child exemption we have one cut start exemption in one of the adjustment we have skipped we may have skipped I will let you know the exact question in which you know correction can be made in which 1500 rupees exemption which is available under section 1032 is to be derived in the solution. I will provide you the solution number and then accordingly you can you know um, adjust it in the solution. Correct. So 1500 friends and income from deposits, okay, minor married daughter to be clubbed, and the net income which will be taxable is 98,500. Correct. Taxable income. Now the last point is cash gift received by minor daughter. Again, as we had discussed, this will be included income from minor income of minor daughter from singing, including cash gift received from friend of Mr. X. You can mention over here. So, since you have handwritten it, you cannot change it. Better to put a fifth adjustment wherein cash gift received for winning in singing competition. Singing competition. will be taxable in the hands of the minor daughter. Correct?
section 641a will not be applicable. So friends, the amount to be clubbed is nil. So friends, total income of Mrs. X is 2,50,000 and total income of Mr. A, Mr. X is nothing but 5 lakhs plus 98,500 which is 5 lakh 98,500 is the total income of Mr. X for the assessment year 2021. So friends this concludes the illustration. Now friends in next illustration Mr. Shah has an income from salary computed of 5 lakhs and his minus son's income are as under. First minus son's income is from a TV show 70,000. So income earned from application of skill. Nothing will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Shah. From interest on FD deposited by Mr. Shah it is 10,000 which will be clubbed in his hands and 1,500 exemption under section 1032 will be available second minus son has earned the following income from a dance show again an application of income application of skill nothing will be taxable in the hands of mr shah and from an interest on fd from interest on fd it is 5000 it will be clubbed in the hands of mr shah and 1500 will will be the exemption amount as per section 1032 compute the gross total income of mr shah so friends, here there are two son, two minor son, okay, and apart from it, what needs to be seen in say cut start, and apart from it, what needs to be seen is the income of the wife of Mr. Shah is not mentioned over here, correct? So we will assume that you know um, the marriage has persisted and the income of mr shah is greater as compared to mrs shah and thereafter only we can club minus son's income with mr shah and also we will have to assume that this is the first year of clubbing of income correct so set of assumptions will have to be mentioned in the solution as well while answering this question Friends, on your screen, computation of gross total income of Mr. Shah. First one is salary income, it is already computed meaning standard deduction has already been provided file like directly can be mentioned second is first minus son's income in that first adjustment is TV show income Since this income of the minor child is from application of skill, talent of the child accordingly same will be taxable accordingly same will be taxable under section same will be taxable in the hands of the minor child so nothing will be clubbed in the hands of mr shah then interest on fb to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Shah, correct? 
to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Shah. Assuming, and let's mention this section as well to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Shah as per section 64 1A. Also, assuming that Mr. Shah Mr. Shah's income is greater than is greater than Mrs. Shah's income, correct? Assuming that Mr. Shah's income is greater than Mrs. Shah's income accordingly, income of minor sons is clubbed in his hands and assuming that this is the first year and assuming that this is the first year and assuming that this is the first start that this is the first year of learning the income of the minor child correct friends so 10,000 less exemption under section 1032 is nothing but 1500 8500 net income of minor child is nothing but 8500 correct now friends this was the second adjustment now the third adjustment second second minor sons income correct first is dance show since application of income same reason as tv show can be mentioned over here wherein nothing will be taxable in the hands of Mr. Shah in this case because the income has been earned by the minor child from application of skill talent and second is interest on FD same reasoning and same assumption mentioned above can be effectively mentioned over here for second minor son as well wherein 5000 less Exemption under section 10 32 can be mentioned 1500 So friends net Income of minor child Second minor child is 3500 correct and this will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Shah So friends, gross total income of of Mr. Shah is nothing but 3500 plus 8500 is nothing but 12,000 and salary is 5 lakh. So 5 lakh 12,000 is the gross total income of Mr. Shah. So friends, this concludes the solution, wherein the gross total income of Mr. Shah is 5 like 12,000 and point to be noted over here is the assumption part, wherein the question is silent for the income of Mrs. Shah, wherein we had to assume that Mr. Shah's income is greater and 
this is the first year of clubbing provisions applicability for each of the minor sun correct so friends this concludes the illustration now friends cut start now friends the next illustration members of kapoor's family derive income as given below examine the tax implications in the hands of mr and mrs kapoor income from mrs kapoor's profession minor sons winning from lottery gross 150000 so mr kapoor's profession income is 50000 and minor sons winnings from lottery it's a gross income and 150000 will be taxable it will be clubbed in the hands of a person whose income is greater correct so minor daughters earnings from acting nothing will be taxable nothing will be clubbed in the hands of either of the parents since application of skill mr kapoor's salary as an accountant 80000 and income of minor son interest on fixed deposit is 15000 so friends here you can see 80000 and 50000 income of mrs kapoor is greater and accordingly income will be clubbed in the hands of and accordingly income will be clubbed in the hands of mrs kapoor in this case correct so friends on your screen we have to compute tax implications in the hands of mr and mrs kapoor income of mr kapoor and income of mrs kapoor correct first is income from profession there is nothing but 50000 winning from lotteries it will be computed in the hands of Mrs. Kapoor as her income is higher so salary income first let me mention that amount according 80,000 correct so 50,000 and 80,000 80,000 income is greater Mrs. Kapoor's income is greater than Mr. Kapoor and accordingly income will be clubbed in the hands of Mrs. Kapoor and it and we have to assume that this is the first year of clubbing the income correct so friends winnings from lottery which is nothing but one lakh fifty thousand and also interest on fixed deposit 15,000 correct less exemption under section 1032 will be 1,500 and the net income will be offered to tax correct and this is the first part and this is the second part and friends the note which will come is income of the minor child minus son will be Clubbed in the hands of Mrs. Kapoor as her income is higher, is greater, as compared to Mr. Kapoor, correct, and and we have assumed, and it is assumed that.
this is the first year of applicability applicability of clubbing provisions correct this will be the note and then professional income we are done laundry income we are done mind cut start minor daughter's earnings from acting this won't be clubbed in either of the parents income minor daughter's earning from acting not to be clubbed as per section 64.1 right 64.1a as application of skill and talent involved nothing will be taxable the income of mr kapoor is nothing but 50000 and here friends the point to be noted is income from profession has been mentioned as for 50000 however in bracket it hasn't been mentioned as computed or whether it is a gross salary gross income or a net income we don't know i mean net of expenses which has been incurred to earn the profession income the same is silent on it so we will assume for profession we will assume that assuming this is the net income correct and for salary income as nothing is mentioned for salary income also the word computed is not mentioned accordingly for this a standard deduction needs to be computed as per section 16 1a right so net salary income is 30,000 since the word computed hasn't been mentioned we will have to compute standard deduction over here and accordingly gross salary will be converted into net salary by way of deduction of standard deduction under section 16 1a and for profession income in a way we do not know what is the quantum of any expenses or not for salary part we are aware that a standard deduction is available of 50,000 however for profession we do not know the exact quantum of expenses that can be claimed as deduction accordingly assumptions are differing for both of them assumption for profession is that it is a net income and accordingly 50,000 has been offered to tax and assumption for salary income is in absence of information and in absence of the word computed we have deducted standard deduction amount of 50,000 from the salary income of from the salary income of 80,000 so in a way friends there could be a possibility that you know income from profession and income from salary income if standard deduction is deducted then 50,000 is greater than 30,000 friends so this will be important over here if a standard deduction is made then 80,000 minus 50,000 80,000 minus 50,000 will be 30,000 which will be less than income from profession of Mr. Kapoor. So friends, you can note over here the difference between the two. Correct. If, you know, suppose in the examination you come to know at a later point of time that the computed part is not mentioned and what needs to be done in this case then since you have already solved your solution considering that mrs kapoor's income is less mrs kapoor's income is more considering 80,000 and 50,000 so here you can always put a note 
that assuming this is the net income right in this solution instead of this line you can always put that assuming this is the net income salary income is the net income and accordingly mrs kapoor income of 80000 will be greater than mr kapoor's income of profession of 50000 and accordingly winnings from lottery and other income of the minor child minor son and daughter will be clubbed in the hands of mrs kapoor so you can always put a note therein and in such a case since you have already solved assuming that mrs kapoor's income is more is greater in such a case you can always put a note saying that salary income assuming that cut start assuming this is the net income thereafter 80,000 will be greater than 50,000 and accordingly winnings from lottery and other income of minor son and minor daughter will be clubbed in the hands of Mrs. Kapoor. Correct friends? So friends this completes this illustration. Now friends the next illustration. Mr. A has four minor children consisting of two daughters, two sons, the annual income of all the children for assessment year 2021 were as follows first daughter including education scholarship received 5000 friends education scholarship cut start friends education scholarship will be exempt under section 10 and accordingly 5000 won't be taxable only 10000 which is 15000 minus 5000 will be taxed in the hands of your there is no mention whether the same is from application of skill or talent or not in the hands of first daughter. So in absence of information, we'll assume that the income is supposed to be club with, with Mr. A. Second daughter, 10,000. First son suffering from section 80 disability and second son, 50,000. Mr. A gifted one lakh to his second son who invested the same in the business and derived income of 15,000 which is included above that is fine I feel same being an accretion of income will be taxable in the hands of will be taxable and the same will be taxable in the hands of Mr. A being income of the minor child correct compute the income amount of income earned by minor children to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. A and also there is no information again over here on the income earned by Mrs. A. So we will have to assume that the marriage has persisted marriage between Mr. A and Mr. B marriage between Mr. A and Mrs. A has persisted and income of Mr. A is greater than Mrs. A also this is the first year of applicability of clubbing provisions of minor children in the hands of Mr. A. So this set of assumptions needs to be made and then income of minor child can be clubbed in the hands of Mr. A. So friends, compute the income earned by minor children to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. A. So, first daughter, first before this, computation income to be clubbed in the hands of Mr. A correct and before starting this a set of assumptions assumption is first is assume that marriage 
of Mr. and Mrs. A. has persisted or you can say that is they are living together right then second assumption it is assumed that Mr. A's income is greater is greater than Mr. Mrs. A income and one more assumption was it is assumed that income that clubbing provisions clubbing of income is assumed that this is the first year of clubbing of income of minor child It is assumed that this is the first year of clubbing of income of minor child and accordingly why this is important is if in the past year it has been decided that you know Mrs. A's income is greater than Mr. A in such a scenario all the income will get clubbed in the hands of Mrs. A because once it is decided in whose favor the income will be clubbed then for the succeeding year it will continued it will be continued it doesn't matter thereafter in the succeeding years it doesn't matter and the exercise of whose income is greater is not required to be done in each and every year once it has been decided that it has to be clubbed in either of the parents and then it will be continued in the succeeding years as well until assessing officer decides otherwise Right. So this assumption point number three is important over here. And fourth you can put as it is assumed that none of the minor children has earned has earned the income none of the minor children has earned the income from application of skill talent etc correct this is also missing in the illustration so friends first is first daughter correct education scholarship will be exempt Uh, scholarship amount is exempt under section 10 correct so 10,000 will be taxable less exemption under section 10 correct under 1032 this limit is available for each and every child The taxable amount is eight thousand five hundred. Second, second daughter amount will be ten thousand minus one thousand five hundred. Accordingly, eight thousand five hundred. Correct. One thousand five hundred deduction is under section ten thirty two. Then, person since. ATU is applicable nothing will be clubbed 
as per section 64 1a second son there are two sources of income no 50,000 is inclusive of 15,000 here you can see 15,000 has been I mean here 50,000 is inclusive and in the adjustment part Mr. A gifted 1 lakh to his second son who invested the same in the business and derived income of 15,000 which is included above no doubt it is an accretion of income but the thing is it has been earned by a minor son right so the amount will be taxable since income of the minor child is to be included in the hands of either of the parents accordingly it will continue to apply it will be part of the total income of the second son and accordingly entire amount will be clubbed correct less 1032 1500 net amount is 48500 correct so friends total amount to be clubbed is nothing but 8500 plus 8500 is 17000 17,000 plus 48,500 is nothing but 65,000 correct this is the amount will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. A and we have made a set of assumption keeping that in mind based on this assumptions total amount that will be clubbed in the hands of Mr. A for assessment year 2021 is 65,000 correct so friends this concludes this part of the illustration and we have concluded all the part of the illustrations this was the last illustration and thereafter we will be continuing with the mcq questions now friends starting with the first mcq income arising to a minor married daughter minor married daughter she will be similar to a minor daughter a minor son okay so income will be continued to be clubbed in the hands of either of the parents whose income is greater correct so no change in treatment as such as compared to a minor son or a minor daughter in the case of minor married daughter so first option to be clubbed with the income of the husband no to be clubbed with the income of that parent whose total income before including minor's income is higher yes this could be a possibility to be assessed in the hands of minor married daughter no i mean this income hasn't been earned i mean there is no mention in the question that the income has been earned cut start the income has been earned by way of application of skill or talent there is absence of such information and accordingly option c cannot be opted for if the income would have been earned by application of skill and talent as per section 64 1a an exception would have been provided wherein the clubbing provisions won't be applicable and the income would have been taxed in the hands of minor married daughter accordingly option b holds good or option d it is completely exempt from tax no it is not exempt if you can say you know if the income is less than 1500 wherein the exemption is provided under section 1032 if the income is 1000 then exemption you could have said that you know it is completely exempted wherein nil amount is getting taxed but however in this kind of limited information option b holds good wherein to be clubbed with the income of that parent whose total income before including minors income is higher so option b is the correct answer and friends the level of mcq that you will see over here comparatively it will be on a simpler side but the thing is this mcq will also help you to understand the provisions in a much better way in which where you can go wrong 
this MCQ can help you out. I mean, you can always think whether it can be exempted, whether the income can be exempted or not, and why such an option has been given. All the options given in the examination, you will find always find that two of the options are more closely related. And in such a case, if you know, if you are not sure of the provisions or your concept is not clear, then it may be possible that you know you will feel that both the options are correct. So to avoid such a scenario, it's better that you read the provisions correctly, right? In case of ambiguity in the provisions, I mean it's always better to read the bare section of the act. What the bare section of the act is trying to say, first try to read that. I mean in the initial time you will find it difficult to get used to the language of the bare sections, language of the bare act. But trust me, if you want to plan a practical way in the taxation, I mean practically if you see even your professor or even your sir in the office will always refer the act in case of ambiguity and that is the only source and ultimate source for understanding what the provision is trying to say right so a particular author book may help you initially wherein they have wherein they have um, made the bare provisions of the act in a better way in which that will help you to understand the provisions but practically if you see it's always good that you read the bare provisions of the act and thereafter you may refer a particular author book or module of institute so once you get used to the language of the bare provisions it will be much easier for you it will be much easier for you to read that particular author book or to read module of institute and it is always recommended that you read two source of book one source which i am already in cover cut start which i am already covering in this section i mean all my notes are from the bare act are from the bare sections so you are already getting used to the provisions which have been mentioned we are already getting used to with the provisions which have been mentioned in the income tax act 1961 and under the income tax rules 1962 so you are getting used to the bare provisions and thereafter the second source of book can be used as a particular author book or you can use the module of the institute for a second reference and second reference would be like you are just going through the provisions over and above the bare provisions and also the thing that I have referred is the thing that I have seen is most of the books are making use of the bare provisions of the act in the examination also if you are mentioning the bare provisions of the act in the solution that will lead to a good you know impression in front of the examiner correct friends having said that let's move on to the next mcq and as you are aware the mcq part in your examination carries 30 marks so 30 70 ratio 30 marks is for mcq and 70 marks is for practical solutions and theoretical questions Second MCQ friends, if the converted property is subsequently partitioned among the members of the family, the income derived from such converted property as is received by the spouse of the transferor will be taxable in whose hands? So, friends, section 64.2, wherein the transferor has transferred the property, has transferred the asset to HUF in such a case and the transfer of asset is for without adequate consideration right and 
such a transfer as per section 64 to any income from such an asset will be clubbed in the hands of the transferor as per 64 to also in case of partition in case of partition even if part of the asset is received by the spouse of the transferor then income will be clubbed in the hands of the transferor and this is coming from the provisions of 64.2 which we have already discussed right so partition and received by the spouse of the transferor so what is the taxability taxability of the income as the income of the karta of the hf no as the income of the spouse of the transferor no as the income of the huf no as the income of the transferor member yes option d so friends you can see if you are not aware of the provisions of 64.2 it may be a possibility that you know you may answer either of the provisions wherein you could guess that you know if asset is transferred to huf then the transferee may be taxable if the asset has been transferred you know after partition it has been transferred to spouse then spouse may be taxable but no you should be aware of the specific provisions what they are trying to say how they are interpreted and then you will be able to answer this question correctly so friends it won't be taxable in the hands of karta it won't be taxable in the hands of huf and neither it will be taxable in the how start in the hands of spouse of the transferor it continues to be taxable in the hands of transferor member so at the cut start so at the point of transfer of the asset to the huf even at that point of time it was taxable in the hands of the transferor member also at the time of partition of huf if any asset goes to the spouse then part of the asset which has gone to the spouse will be clubbed in the hands of the transferor member so this point you have to note fine and this is coming from section 642 moving on to next mcq where a member of a hgf has converted or transferred his self acquired property for inadequate consideration into joint family property income arising therefrom this is what we have just discussed it will be taxable in the hands of transferor member right taxable as the income of transferor member yes taxable in the hands of huf no taxable in the hands of karta of huf no or exempt from tax it is not exempt from tax and neither it is taxable in the hands of karta or huf it will be taxable in the hands of transferor income next part income of a minor child suffering from any disability of the nature specified in 80u section 80u as per section 641a income will be taxable in the hands of minor child in income will be taxable in the hands of such a minor child who is suffering from disability and nothing will be clubbed in the hands of either of the parents right so completely exempt no it is not exempt to be clubbed with the income of the father no to be assessed in the hands of the minor child yes to be clubbed with the income of that parent whose total income before including minor's income is higher so you can see i mean there could be a close possibility of between a c and d wherein if you think you know out of compassion nothing should be made taxable in the hands of the ssc in the hands of the minor child then you could have ticked a wherein complete exemption is available but no as far as you know you go through the provisions of uh, section 64 the income will be taxable in either of the hands there is never an exemption available either it will be clubbed in the hands of parents or it will be clubbed or it will be taxable in the hands of the minor son or minor daughter correct and the only exemption available is under section 1032 wherein 1500 wherein 1500 income will be exempt 
in the case of each minor children in the hands of the parent in whose income the income of the minor children has been clubbed correct so the only exemption available is under section 1032 and there is never a complete exemption of the amount either it will be taxable in the hands of minor child or it will be clubbed in the hands of the parent and if you thought that you know if it should be clubbed in either of the parents hand then it could fall under D point D so options are closely connected if you are not aware of the provisions then you may answer it wrongly to answer to this question friends is point number C option number C next is exemption of a certain amount not exceeding the income clubbed is available under section 1032 where a minor's income is clubbed with the income of the parent the maximum exemption available is as you are aware it is 1500 right so up to 1500 in respect of each minor child yes up to 2000 no up to 2000 in respect of each minor child maximum of two children no and up to 1500 in respect of each minor child maximum of two children no it is available to in the case of it is available to the parent in the case of each and every child even if children are exceeding children is exceeding more than two the exemption will be continued to be applied for each and every minor child very important difference because as you have seen in the case of you know education expenses wherein exemption is available of 100 rupees per month right and hostel expenses wherein 300 rupees per month exemption is available under section 10 when you read it with rule 2bb right we have covered this in the topic of salaries so at that point of time there is a clause wherein exemption for up to only two children is allowed right and also there are specific provision wherein under leave travel allowance also exemption is available up to two children for third children no benefit of exemption is available so we can be confused a person can be confused from those provisions wherein there could be a possibility that this exemption is available only to only up to two children but it is not the case for exemption under section 1032 for each minor child the exemption limit is applicable so friends option a is the right answer is the right option next is mr abc transfers income of 2 lakhs from rent to his major son without transfer of house property rent of 2 lakh is so friends section 60 wherein without transferring of an asset there is transfer of income the same will be taxable in the hands of mr abc correct taxable in the hands of his son no there could be a doubt that you know since he is a major son it should be taxable in the hands of his son but no section 60 will be applicable and accordingly the income will be taxable in the hands of the transferer taxable in the hands of transferer father yes it will be never exempted exempt from tax and taxable in the hands of that parent whose total income is higher point d will come into picture only where the clubbing provisions are applicable right and in the case of minor child in this case this is a major son and section 60 will be applicable and not section 64 1a accordingly the same will be taxable in the hands of the transferer father right option b is the correct answer scholarship to meet the cost of education received by a minor child is friends as we have discussed earlier also scholarship will be any income from scholarship will be exempt in the hands of the recipient under section 10 to be assessed in the hands of minor child no completely exempt from tax yes option number b to be clubbed with the income of father no and to be clubbed with the 
income of the parent whose income is greater or higher no option c and d are also not applicable since the income is exempt entirely the scholarship fees since it is exempt nothing is supposed to be clubbed correct and option number b is correct wherein completely exempt from tax is the right answer scholarship to meet the cut start scholarship to meet the cost of education received by a minor child is completely exempt from tax as per section 10 income of a minor child from a fixed deposit with a bank made out of the income earned from scholarship is so friends here you can see there is accretion of income right the scholarship fees is specifically exempted however when there is fixed deposit income it is supposed to be taxed okay it is supposed to be taxed and since it will be income of the minor child it will be clubbed in the hands of either of the parents whose income is greater as per section 64 1a so to be assessed in the hands of minor child no he has not earned the cut start no he has not earned this out of application of skill talent he has not earned this out of manual work neither the minor child is suffering from section 80u severe disability mentioned under section 80u since this cut start since these three exceptions are not applicable the minor child won't be taxed the income from fixed deposit won't be taxed in his hands correct to be clubbed with the income of that parent whose total income before including minor's income is higher yes completely exempt no to be clubbed with the income of father no it cannot be completely exempt there may be a doubt that you know scholarship fees since it is exempt fd from it should also be exempt no you can see fd is from the scholarship fees but here the income from the same will be taxed in the hands of either of the parents because the main purpose of exempting the scholarship fees was to provide an incentive to the minor child to study further right however he has sold the scholarship fees the scholarship amount received from the government has been used for the purpose of earning interest from the fixed deposit so it hasn't been used for the intended purpose right and accordingly any interest income from such a deposit will be taxable and no exemption will be provided accordingly option number b is the correct answer wherein as per section 64 1a the same the income will be clubbed in the hands of either of the parents whose income is greater correct and friends the last mcq and after this we will be concluding the topic of clubbing provisions so friends interest from a fixed deposit received from a received by a minor married daughter friends here in the first illustration also we had discussed that minor married daughter will be similar to a minor son or a minor unmarried daughter accordingly the income should be clubbed in the hands of either of the parents whose income is greater correct to be assessed in the hands of minor child no to be clubbed with the income of that parent whose income before including minor's income is higher yes completely exempt no to be clubbed with the income of a husband no so friends option number b is the correct answer with this friends we conclude the topic the sub topic of illustrations and topic of clubbing provisions thank you